Hello again. My name is Shannon Nicole Kringen, and I call myself Goddess Kring. And that is my super superhero nickname that I gave myself to try to rise above my victimhood. The flip side in archetypal psychology, the flip side of being a victim is being a hero. And part of the gift of being a wounded, emotionally wounded person is that I can be a healer, the wounded healer. So I, I would say the flip side to being wounded is to be healed and to help others heal. So this is part two of my video monologue about borderline personality disorder and my experience with borderline. Again, I'm using this book, the Skills Training Manual for um, borderline personality disorder and this is a way of acknowledging the issues that go along with having a tendency towards borderline and I wanted to say I noticed I watched the first video I did about borderline personality disorder and I noticed that I didn't really I said I was high functioning but I didn't really talk about all the amazing things I've done and I, I, I part of my healing is to really integrate and appreciate myself because the flip side of okay I, I work on forgiving myself for my flaws but I also need to work on appreciating myself for all the amazing things I've done for instance the downside of my borderline personality disorder is that I'm very sensitive, very emotional, and I've had chaotic relationships. But the upside, despite all of that, despite my sensitivity and my moodiness and my emotional reactivity, I have managed to do amazing things in my life. And I'm trying to remember to not dismiss because whenever I do something amazing I always think yeah but I should be even better or I really want to do even more it's like I always dismiss and I learned that from certain aspects of the way I was raised it seems like I'm afraid of being too proud of myself because I'm afraid that's egotistical and yet I'm not afraid to beat myself up and put myself down like I beat myself up and put myself down all the time and it's like you know that's sad but I, I the healthy part of me sees the absurdity of putting myself down is so destructive and so silly and so harmful and really so sad because the truth about me is that I'm very talented and I'm in some ways I'm a wonderful person I know that I am you know I I have um, I have done some amazing things with my life and I, I wish that I could be more stable and do them more consistently but I will say I want to use this video to honor the things that I've done so I am a highly functional person that has borderline personality disorder traits in other words it's hard for me to regulate my emotions it's hard for me to not be self-destructive. It's hard for me to really be nurturing and loving towards myself and stay calm during stressful situations. And it's hard for me to not want to push people away and isolate um, and think that I'm supposed to do everything by myself. So these are some of the amazing things I've done. I have been a figure model in Seattle for 20 years, you know, since I'm 43 right now. And when I was 23, I started modeling for art classes and I'm the nude person that's in the art room when they draw, paint, and sculpt. And I'm the one who's hired to stay still and do interesting poses. And people have said that I'm one of their favorite models. They have said I have good presence, that I'm easy to work with, that I'm calm and peaceful. So there is part of me that is able to get into the Shannon Kringen, the figure model. I'm able to get into this positive, wonderful state when I model for people, it calms me down. Like I could be having a really bad, um, horrible, stressful mood and a bad like day emotionally per in my personal life, but then I could show up to a modeling gig and I'm happy to be there and I'm really professional and I stay calm and I'm a really good model. 
even when I'm in a bad mood. So I managed to somehow be really functional when it comes to my job and work as a model. And also at school, although I have to say I have had some really moody times at school, but generally speaking, in between classes, but when I'm actually in the classroom, I'm usually very functional and I participate in all the assignments and I turn in my papers and I write and I speak and I share with people. I'm not as good at trying to be friends with people that I go to school with, but I have been going to school to finish my BA for two years and I've never missed a class and I've turned in every assignment and I've participated as fully as I can in the group discussions and I'm actually getting better at speaking and managing the fact that I'm afraid of people and I, I sometimes feel competitive or like people are out to get me. I'm sort of traumatized by being teased as a kid for being different or for being shy or for being... I was teased a lot so I am facing my fear though. I am in school finishing my BA degree. I'm probably going to go on and do my masters and I wanted to say, you know, recently I went to Scotland, Edinburgh, Scotland, and I stayed with people and did couch surfing. I mean, you know, despite my tendency towards borderline traits of being self-destructive and um, mostly what I do is I beat myself up in my head and I have thrown tantrums and yelled and screamed and I have been very mean to men who have tried to date me and I feel really bad about that. I feel really ashamed and bad about my anger and my moods. And I hope someday to learn how to have a positive, loving, long-term partnership with a man. I keep trying. You know, at least I try. I, I date people and I try to get involved and I try to see if I can have a relationship. I think right now I want to take a break from trying that. But I'm trying to work on my friendship skills and trying to see what kind of friendships can I have with men and women. Platonic friendships. And I have a really good massage therapist, and she's a sliding scale person, and I have a really good therapist that I've worked with for nine years. So I need to give myself credit. You know, maybe part of being borderline is, is you know, borderline personality disorder, is feeling um, disempowered and feeling dismissive of yourself, feeling like you're an empty void that can never be filled up enough. And the truth is, is that on, online, I've been sharing my photography and my art online for over 10 years. And I did public access TV show called Goddess Kring every week for 15 years. And it's yet, I'd, and yet I don't give myself credit for that. I, I think, yeah, 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 but I should, you know, have won the Pulitzer Prize by now, or I should be more successful. Or I, I should have done better. I should have done more. So I dismiss I, I, I'm dismissive of myself whenever I do something amazing. I mean, they made a film about me, a short documentary film about me called Typecast Dragon, and it was screened at the Toronto Film Festival, it was screened at the Seattle Film Festival, and now it's going to show at Bumper Shoot in Seattle of 2012. And I'm really happy and proud about that. And yet I think, yeah, but there should be a full-length documentary made about me. <laughs> there should be even more, more, more. I could never be, never get enough attention, never get enough validation. So I'm recognizing, my therapist said I need, I need to work on integration, meaning integrate. When, when, whenever I accomplish a goal and I do well at something, I need to integrate that into me and go, look, I did something really good. I'm doing some good things. I'm you know, I'm better than I think that I am. I tend to put myself down and dismiss myself all the time. And that's part of the self-destructive borderline tendency. So, you know, some people cut themselves like physically with a knife. They have, they, they say that they feel so much pain that they feel like cutting themselves distracts them from their deeper emotional pain and they cut themselves to relieve themselves. I don't do that. So I need to celebrate the fact that I'm so glad that I don't have the urge to cut myself. But what I do do is I put myself down in my head. I, I, I beat myself up in my head really, really severely, and it's really bad. I put myself down and say horrible things to myself about myself. And that's really bad because it messes up my chances of having good relationships with other people. And it definitely shows that I don't have a good relationship with myself at times. Today, I'm in my wise mind. I've done 10-day silent meditation retreats called Vipassana a couple times. And I'm really good at meditating. So thank God, I am actually highly functional. I have borderline tendencies, but I'm very highly functioning. In other words, I can go to school, I can be a figure model, I can do 10-day silent meditation retreats 
which means that I must be healthy enough to do that. I can sit and meditate all day and I didn't freak out. So I need to give myself credit for how functional I've been. And I've been to Europe six times in the last 16 years. I've, I've gone to Scotland and England and Belgium and France and Norway and um, Spain and Austria and Switzerland and France and England, I think I already said that, and Italy. I love traveling and I would love to go to Asia and Africa. And so I've done a lot of traveling and I take really good care of my house plants and I'm an animal lover. I take care of my cat and there's a homeless cat that I help take care of and I take my cat for walks. I mean, I do some really good things and it's a little bit sad that I don't give myself credit for the good things that I do and I tend to just fixate on whatever my flaws are. And so maybe that's part of it, part of the illness itself is to overemphasize what's wrong with me and underemphasize what's great about me and what's functional. And because I also I have a fear of denial and so I'm so afraid of denial that I wallow in all the all the dark stuff about myself and I would like to learn to balance that. I want to acknowledge the stuff about me that I need to heal and also give myself credit and feel grateful and happy and proud of the fact that I love myself enough to take care of myself in some ways. I do. I mean, I, I know that I feel better if I go to work and I earn money and I pay my bills and I show up and I do my homework and I take good care of my cat. I mean, I know I do some positive things that are good self-care and I'm trying to build on that. And I seem almost addicted to, beat, to beating myself up psychologically, putting myself down. I have a habit of riding my bicycle around Seattle and yelling and screaming and crying. And that's really not a good thing to do because it, it's harm. It's, I'm humiliating myself in public and I'm also running the risk of scaring somebody that hears me doing this. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to spread around bad energy that stresses people out. The world is messed up enough as it is and I don't want to contribute to the fear that people have of other people by freaking out in public and so it's actually dangerous for me to freak out in public like that. I'm putting myself at risk of somebody getting me in trouble in some way so I need to really be careful with that so I'm really happy that I don't cut myself but I need to I need to really be mindful of when I freak out you know there's healthy ways to channel that there's healthy ways for me to deal with my distress tolerance and to deal with, I think I snap like that sometimes because I feel like when I'm around people, other people at school and stuff, I'm like really polite and I'm trying really hard to, to be polite and do the right thing and be who I think other people want me to be. That's a borderline thing too is thinking who should I be instead of loving your loving instead of me loving myself as I am and saying I'm a good person I'm just gonna be myself you know that's what I like to say on my goddess Kring show be yourself no matter what they say you know I got that from a sting song Englishman in New York I love stings music and so be yourself no matter what they say is what goddess Kring my higher self likes to say but in reality, Shannon Kringen tends to think she's not okay the way she is. You know, beat myself up and I should be a certain way. And, and I'm afraid other people don't like me. And I have all these like really big, I'm afraid that people don't like me all the time. And I'm afraid people are out to get me. I have sort of paranoid thoughts sometimes that people are out to get me. So I go to school and I try to control all of those. I try really hard and I, I show up and I do my assignments, but all the time I'm sort of holding back a little bit and feeling like I'm being a little bit fake out of fear. But I'm, try I'm, I'm getting better at sort of letting myself be my real self around people a little bit more and saying whatever my opinion is in class and letting people not understand or maybe I am the only person in the room that brings up something like I said Confucius was like a socialist you know ahead of his time because I kind of believe in aspects of socialism which is not a popular thing to say in the United States of America so you know when I say that I feel very vulnerable when I say in class and I talk about socialism and I talk about unusual ideas you know I feel it's vulnerable to do that so I need to give myself credit for the, having the courage to do that. And I wanted to share something, my artwork, you know. I have done 
self-portraits and I don't know if you can see I'm going to try to zoom in here hopefully oh boy out of focus there try to zoom in this is like a these are like some oh I'm trying to focus forgive me if it's out of focus um where's the focuser here focus focus so here's like examples of self-portraits I've done of my face which are interesting and these are just different facets and all photos that I took of myself and this is really kind of cool it's kind of this neat sculpture thing that I made my face morphed in different ways as part of one of my abstract paintings and just my face is morphed there's me as a little three-year-old kid and just lots of different you know I, I use myself as a canvas and I use and you know I'm very sensitive to people criticizing me like if you go to my website okay pardon me while I adjust the camera lens here sorry sorry um, there okay um, if you go to shannonkringen.com and you, you can find my Flickr photos and there's just thousands of photos I've taken of myself I also volunteer at the zoo in Seattle and I, I'm really good at that I'm really good at being a model really good at going to college I mean I'm really good it's my personal relationships that are hard for me I don't have a lot of close personal relationships I'm really good with my house plants I'm really good with my cat I'm fairly close to my mom and fairly close to my dad although there's some issues between both of us in different ways they're divorced I have a nice stepdad I have a mom, a dad, and a stepdad, and I'm kind of close to all of them, but there's, you know, there's some issues between all of us in our own different ways, and it's not perfect, but we have fairly open, honest communication mostly, and I'm really happy about that. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't do drugs, you know, I exercise every day. I mean, I do a lot of good things, but I'm really hard on myself. Despite all of that, I'm really hard on myself, and I discount myself. And I, I painted shoes for Tori Amos. Tori Amos wore them on stage in 1996 in Seattle, and she thanked me in front of the whole crowd at the Paramount Theater. I met Jeff Bridges, I, the actor. I was in a, an extra in a film called American Heart way back in 1992. I've traveled to Europe a bunch of times. I'm in school. I mean, I've done some amazing things, and yet I still think, yeah, but I'm not good enough. You know, I'm really hard on myself, and it's really sad, and so, I'm just learning to have compassion for myself and try to figure out, I'm looking at the time, okay, try to figure out how I can have compassion and forgive myself. It's, it's almost like I'm as much ashamed of my beauty and my talent and my success as I am of my flaws. And that's so sad. For some reason, I'm because my dad used to criticize successful people and say they were self-indulgent and overrated or underrated. And my mom would say people were on an ego trip. And so there's part of me that's very afraid of, I don't want to be in an ego trip and I don't want to be too confident and arrogant and self-indulgent because then other people won't like me because my parents criticized successful people. And so it made me feel like, oh, I better not be successful because then my parents won't like me. Isn't that weird? And I'm also ashamed of my flaws. I'm ashamed of needing people. I'm ashamed of my emotional needs. I'm not ashamed of my sexuality. I've had a pretty interesting sex life. I've had a lot of interesting boyfriends and some good lovers. And I'm really happy and grateful about that. But in terms of my love life having real boyfriends in my life who really wanted to be my boyfriend and be there for me emotionally I haven't really had met a lot of men who really wanted to be through thick and thin a partner with me and part of that is my thing because I was mean to some men that I had potential with and I screwed it up and I ruined it so this is a lot of stuff going on here. I have a lot of awareness about relationships, a lot of insights. I think I want to get my master's in psychology and combine it with art and healing and therapy. And I was going to say, if you go to shannonkringen.com, you can see my photography. And I was going to say, I do take thousands of pictures of myself, and I'm proud of that. But I get really upset when people accuse me of being narcissistic, and I feel defensive about it. But it's my own self-healing to take pictures of myself. And other people seem to like them, some of my photos, too, and I'm happy about that. But I also need to learn how to accept the fact that some people don't like my work, and they're entitled to feel that way. That's okay. But I like my work. 
and my self portraits are some of my favorite things to do but I'm also a really good photographer in terms of animals I've taken a lot of animal photographs of animals at the zoo that are beautiful and they've been used and published in different ways I'm in that book Weird Washington which is pretty cool I'm the hero goddess Kring and there's a documentary made about me and I'm in this uh, fashion magazine called death book I mean, I've, I've been interviewed a bunch of times. I've been in some magazines. It's really cool. I've been an extra in a film. Tori Amos wears shoes I painted for her. It's, that's pretty cool. That's amazing what I've done. And yet I feel a little bit ashamed of it. When I'm successful at something, I feel like, oh, who do I think I am? And then when I fail at something, I think, oh, look, at I'm a failure. And I don't like that either. So it's like, God, you know, damned if I do and damned if I don't. So these are some of my personal demons and my issues I'm working through with my borderline personality disorder tendency. So I need to learn to validate myself, appreciate myself, forgive myself for my flaws, and allow myself also to succeed and do well. And if someone else is jealous of me because I'm doing well, I need to just not let that bother me and just keep doing what I love and try to spread good energy around. So I think I want to get a master's in psychology and combine that with art because I'm going to a college that's really alternative, no grades, no tests, written evaluations, and they let you design your own degree. And so I, would, I want to do a, an MA in psychology and tie it into the personal healing power of creativity and how art has helped me become self-aware. I've used self-portraiture in my art to help me become aware of myself and who I am and who I'm not and how to validate myself and empower myself. And I would like to spread this energy around in a good way. And there's also an article in Transpersonal Psychology Journal about uh, creative photography being similar to Taoism and staying in the present moment. So there's a lot of spiritual wisdom in making art and, and ties in with Taoism and, and Zen Buddhism and being in the present moment. Um, there's a lot of wisdom and I really think I can be a good person that gets a master's degree and combines a, again the spiritual creative healing power of art and teach some kind of creative spiritual studies mixed with art. I don't want to be a therapist. I don't want to be an art therapist. Everyone tells me I should be an art therapist. I don't want to be a therapist. I like the idea of being a teacher though and combining art with spirituality and self-awareness and psychology and, and art, self-awareness, psychology and spirituality. So that's my plan is to pursue my masters. And I thrive with structure. I also recently got a car for the first time in my life. I'm 43 years old and I just got my first car and I just got my first driver's license. And I have one of those little tiny smart cars. Little teeny, really good gas mileage, 40 miles to the gallon, little tiny European car. I love it. It's a smart car and it's one of those little tiny miniature cars. Looks like half a car. Kind of looks like a ladybug, I think, like a like a ladybug. So thank you for listening. My name is Shannon Kringen. You're watching Goddess Kring. And please check out my website with questions or comments, shannonkringen.com, or look for me on Flickr. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and Flickr. I'm all over the place online. I love to share my work. I'm trying to heal and grow, learn to validate myself. I hope I can spread positive message in the universe empower people to love themselves, heal yourself, love yourself, use creativity, whether it's music or visual art or dance or theater or drumming or singing or dancing or just writing in a journal, writing poetry, stream of consciousness, get that book, The Artist's Way, that's a great book. Um, there's a lot of healing and, and you can connect with other people through creativity if you're afraid. I, I use my art to connect with people too because I'm a little bit shy and yet I'm a figure model. So this is Shannon Kringen signing off. I'll see you next time. Thanks for, um, okay, I need, to find, I need to find the off button. Where's the off button? I don't know where it is. Sorry, I'm like, where's the button? I can't, I can't find the button. Um, yeah, thank you for watching this video and I hope that you got something out of it. Oh my gosh, I really can't find the off button. I can't, I can't feel where it, I think, okay, I think this is it. Okay, goodbye, see you next time. Nope, it's still on, okay. I'm still looking for the button. Where's the button? I'm not seeing the button. Well, okay. I am going to have to go like this to find the button. Where's the button? It's gone.
gone. There is no button. I really can't. I don't even see the button anywhere. <laughs>